Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to create up a minimal chat application. So I'll teach you how to do the authentication, the chatting functionalities, and also have a light mode and dark mode for the design aesthetic. Now, just before we start coding, I'm just going to show you a quick overview of what we're about to create. So the first thing is the user is going to go to the login page. And if they don't have an account, then you can go to the register page to create one. And then so once we have an account, we can go to our home page and we can access the settings. And also the main thing is the chat page where we can chat to different users. So this is what we're going to do on a very basic level. Now, just to add a little bit more detail at the very, very beginning, we're going to need to have a little check to see if the user is currently logged in or not. So if they're not logged in, then obviously let's just go to the login page. But if they are logged in, then let's go straight to the home page. So if you think about like an app like Instagram, then you're not going to log in every single time, right? It should remember the fact that you were logged in before. And similarly, if we go to the settings page, we should be able to log out and bring us back to the beginning. And on the setting page, we'll also have a toggle for the light mode and dark mode. And then finally, in terms of storing the data, we're going to use Firestore and we're going to collect two bits of information. So firstly, we're just going to collect the users. So let's say like user one, two, and three. And we're also going to collect the data for the chat rooms. So an example of a chat room is going to be the one between user one and two. And then that's going to have its own set of messages. And then between user one and three, and then between user two and three. So we're gonna have a bunch of chat rooms. And so this is how we're going to store the data. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which brings us to this login page. And I've got all the pages in a separate folder just to keep our code nice and organized. And this login page should just be a blank scaffold. So you should just have a white blank app like this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before we code up the UI is to create another folder called themes so that we can set this up nicely for light mode and dark mode. So let's just start off with light mode and you can play around with these colors, but you can also just copy the ones that I've chosen. So the one I like to specify are the background, primary, secondary, tertiary, and also inverse primary. So these are just different shades of gray that you can use. So what you can do is in the background color of the scaffold, we can say theme dot of context, go to the color scheme, and then you can see all of those options. So if you come to our main dot dot file in the material app, you can give it your light mode and we should have a kind of light gray background. Cool. Now in the body, let's have a big column and let's start building out this UI for the login screen. So I'm just gonna start off with a big logo at the top, have a bit of a welcome back message, and then we need a couple of text fields for the email and password. Then we also need a login button and a little register now toggle to go to the register page if the user already has an account. Now for the logo, you can put in any image or icon that you want. But for now, I'm just going to put in a message icon just to keep it simple. And it looks like it's scrunched up in the corner. So I'm just going to main axis alignment to the center and also just center this column. And I feel like we could make this a bit bigger. And so for the color of this icon right now, it's just black. Now I'm going to use the primary color. So I want to make it a little bit grayer. And then let's have a message saying, welcome back, you've been missed. Looks like we could use a bit of space here. And I'm just going to style up the color and maybe make it a bit bigger. And then let's have another bit of space. And then we want to have a text field. So if you just type text field and save it, you should be able to see this little line where you can type a message in. Now we're going to probably use a text field multiple times in this project. So I'm going to create a separate folder called components. And this is where I like to have those widgets I like to reuse. So I'm going to create a new file called my text field. Now 
and we're going to decorate this up. So I want to have a outline input border. And we can also have a focus border, which is when the user clicks into it. So just so that I can demonstrate what I'm doing, let's come back to our login page and start typing my text field. And you can see it says there auto import, just hit enter. And there it is, you can see that little background there. So you got the focus border and the enabled border. So if you click into it, it should light up a little bit. Cool, now I think it's too stuck to the edges. So let's put some padding on the horizontal and also let's put in a fill color. and say field is true then you can see it's got a color inside and the other useful thing is hint text so what hint text does is it's just a string so you could say like type something dot dot now the first one i'm going to need it as a email and the second one i need it as a password so what i'm going to do is just change this to a, be a variable so at the top i'm going to accept a string called hint text and require it And so if you come back to my text field, you can see it's got a red squiggle now because we have to specify that hint text. So for the first one, we can just say email. We can copy this and say password for the second one. Now it looks like we should probably have some space in between. And the hint text usually kind of as the name implies, it should be a hint. So I'm going to make this much lighter, right? And again, you can change any of these colors in the light mode file. And let's just keep going. So you can start typing our email and the password. Now you can see for the password, we don't want to show the password, right? We want to obscure it. So this obscure text is a Boolean, meaning it's just a true or false. So it's false by default. But if I say true, you can see it's going to obscure the text like that, which is what we want for the password. So we're going to also accept this Boolean at the top. And if we come back to our text fields in our login page, we have to specify it. So obviously for the email, we want to make it false. And for the password, we want to make it true. We do want to obscure it like that. Cool. Now the last thing is we want to access what the user typed in the text field, right? So to do that, we need to give it a controller. So let's just require that as well. And we're going to need to create these text controllers at the top. So let's call it email controller and also password controller. And let's continue this on. So let's just have another bit of space and we're going to have a login button. Now, same thing for this, we're probably gonna to need to use this button in other areas of the app. So in the components folder, I'm gonna create a new file called my button. And let's just start decorating this up. So in the middle, in the center, I wanna just have a text widget saying button for now. And let's decorate up the colors. And I just want to see what this looks like as I build it. So in the login page, let's say my button. And there it is, auto import, so hit enter. And that's what it looks like currently. So I think the first thing is I need some padding in the inside. And we need some margin to get it off of the edges in the horizontal direction. And of course the corners, you know, I don't like sharp corners. So let's curve these border radius. And the other thing is the button. I want it to say something else. So let's accept this as a string at the top. So if I come back to my login page, when I create this button, I can just give it a text 
let's say login for our one. Cool, now this button needs to be tappable, obviously. So let's wrap this in a gesture detector. And you can see we can require this function at the top as well for the on tap. So if I tap on this login button, we want to log in. So let's just create that method real quick at the top and then we can fill this out later when we do the authentication. And then finally, after a little bit more space, so we want to say some text saying not a member, then register now. So if the user already has an account, sorry, if the user doesn't have an account, then we want to send them to the register page, right? So what I want actually is I want the register now to be a clickable text. So I'm just going to separate this out into two text widgets in a row. Then let's send to this. And for the register now, just to show the user it's actually clickable, let's make this bold and then we can use this to go to the register page later. Sweet, now that we've made our login page, let's also create a register page. And this one's going to be very similar to our login page. So I'm just gonna grab the scaffold here and let's just copy and paste this in and let's import the necessary components and the controllers as well let's grab those so if you go to these login buttons let's change this to register And just to see the changes, let's go to our main.dart file and just return the register page right away. Cool, now we're gonna to need to change some of these messages. So let's say, let's create an account for you. And we need one more controller for the register page because I wanna have a confirm password text field. Okay, so we've got the email, we've got the password, but let's grab one of these and create one more for the confirm password. And at the very bottom, instead of saying not a member, we can say already have an account, then let's log in now. Cool, so we've made our register page and also our login page UI. Now, if you look at the main.dart file, we are showing one or the other, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another file called login or register, and let's put this in a separate folder called auth. So all of the authentication related stuff, let's put it in this folder. So what this login or register file is gonna do is we're going to initially show the login page. And we also wanna have a toggle to switch between the two pages. Okay, so we can say in the build method, if we are showing the login page, then just return the login page, else return the register page. Okay, so if I come back to my main.dart file, let's just import what we created. And so by default, it's gonna show the login page first. Now I wanna to go to the register page when I click on this register now text. So let's come to that text widget and we're going to wrap it in a gesture detector so that we can tap on it. And it's gonna require this function. So let's just grab this and create it at the top. Same thing for the register page. And so what we just did is if I come back to the red squiggle here for a login page, it's going to require us to specify the on tap. So if we tap on it, then 
we can toggle pages. Sweet, let's see if this works. So you can click on register now and then it goes to the register page. You click on login now and it goes to the login page and we can go back and forth. Now let's come to our Firebase console and let's create a new project. I'm just gonna call it chat app shoot, like chat app tutorial. And once you've created that, let's go to the authentication and click get started. And you can see here the email and password. That's the one. So, so enable it. And let's just create a test user. So test at gmail.com and just give it a password. And so in the project overview, you can see it says get started by adding Firebase to your app. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our code and in the terminal, if you haven't already done so, then you need to type in this command to install the Firebase tools. But I've already done that, so make sure you've done this as well. So that we can now say Firebase login. So make sure that it's logged in to the same email as your console. And then we can say Flutter Pub Global Activate Flutterfire CLI. And on Mac, I always get this issue, just copy this in. And then we can say Flutterfire Configure. And so what this will do is it will show you all of your Firebase projects. So just go to the one that you just created, chat up shoot. And hit yes. And if you come back to our console and you just refresh the page, hopefully you've added the two Android and iOS. You can see it's connected there. Sweet, and it looks like we have a red squiggle and oh yeah, we also have to now add the package. So Flutter pub add, we wanna add Firebase core. Cool, and while we're here, we also wanna add Firebase auth so that we can now do the authentication. And just a last little setting up we need to do in the main file is this widgets Flutter binding ensure initialized and change this to an asynchronous function so that we can await Firebase initialize app for the current platform. So once you've done all that, just kill the app and restart it. And if your app opens like normal, then your app is connected to Firebase. Sweet, now let's figure out the authentication. So in the auth folder, let's create another file called auth service.dart. And in here, we're going to have all of the functionality. So we first are gonna just get the instance of the auth. We're going to sign in, sign up, and also sign out, and maybe deal with any errors if there are. So what we can do is say firebase.instance, and let's start off with our sign in method. So this is going to be a future. And I'm going to call this sign in with email and password. And all we need is an email and a password string. So when we call this method, we're going to try to sign in with email and password. And if there's any exceptions, any errors, then we're going to catch it and throw the error. Now, just before we build this any further, let's see if this sign in method works. So in our login page, we had this login method here, right? So that's when we click on the login button. What we want to do is we want to firstly get our auth service. And let's try the login and catch any errors. So on this page, we want to deal with any of the UI related stuff. So we're going to try to sign in and we need to get the text from each of the email and password controllers.
And if we have any errors, then let's show a dialog box, which means we're going to need to know what the current context is. And so we're just going to show a little box just saying what the error is. Cool, so that should be working fine. Now, one more thing we need is I need another file called authgate. And so what this authgate does is we're going to use a stream builder and the stream is just going to listen to any auth state changes. And so what this means is it's just going to check if the user is logged in or not. So if the user is logged in, then we're going to return the home page, which we haven't created yet. If the user is not logged in, then we're going to just return either the login or register page. So let's just quickly create that home page. And so if you go to the very beginning of the main.dart file, currently returning the login or register page, but I'm just gonna now return the auth gate. Okay, so the auth gate, what it's gonna do is it's gonna check to see if we're logged in or not, to then see what the appropriate page is that we need to display. Cool, so now our login should work. So let's try our test account. So we said test at gmail.com and the password. Then we can now go to our home page which means now we should have a way to log out, right? So in the app bar, in the actions, we can have a little log out button. So when we execute this log out function, then we need an ability to sign out. So let's come back to our auth service and create this sign out method. And this one's really easy. Just go to your auth and go sign out. Cool, so let's come back to our UI. So here we need to get our auth service. And then just sign out. Cool, so if I just try this out, if I click the sign out button on the top bar, on the top app bar, then it will just sign us out automatically. And again, just to remind you, that's what this auth gate is doing. It's constantly listening to the auth state changes, whether we're signed in or not. Cool. So if I just show you here, we can... Now we need to go to the register page and have an ability to sign up. So sign up with email and password. I just need to know the email and password. So firstly, let's try signing up. So I think it's create user. Yep, with email and password. And just catch any errors. Sweet, so let's go to our register page and in the register method UI. We need to get our auth service first of all. And just sign up. Let's give it our email controller text and our password controller text. Now one thing just to help our code out a bit is I want to only do this when our password and the confirmed password is the same. So if the password and the confirmed password match, then let's try to sign up and also catch any errors. Let's actually get the login page show dialog, this guy, and paste it here. We're going to need to know the context. So let's give that as a parameter. And so I'm just going to put a bit of comments here. So if the passwords match, then let's create user. And if the passwords don't match, then we're going to show an error telling the user to fix.
Okay, let's try this. So if I try to create a user, then yay, we can go straight to the home page. And if I come back to my console, if you go to your authentication, you can see there's our account we just created. Awesome. And also just to see if our code is working, if the passwords don't match like this, then it says passwords don't match. Cool. So now that we're on our homepage, I want to have a bit of a menu drawer. So if you just type drawer and you save it, you can see that little menu icon on the top left and you can click this to open up the drawer. And I just want to keep my code nice and clean. So I'm going to separate this out into an individual component. Give it a background color. And we're gonna have a big column. So at the top, I want a bit of a logo and then a home list tile, a settings list tile. And at the very bottom, we want a logout tile. So just to see our progress as we code this up, in our home page, let's type my drawer. Oh, it's not there. Why? Oh, it's called my widget. Let's change this to my drawer. And let's start off with our logo. So at the top is a good idea to put a drawer header so that we can put an icon or an image. And then beneath that, we can have some list tiles. So the first one's just going to be a home. Let's give it a home icon. And I think we could use some padding on the left. Yeah, let's copy this and create one for the settings. And also for the logout. Now, just for the logout one, I want that one to be on the very bottom of the screen. So what you can do is everything above it let's wrap that in another column right which means this overall column we can say space between and then it pushes everything to either side and then let's come to our logout tile and i feel like we could give it a bottom padding as well sweet that's looking good so let's start filling out the functionality of this so on the on tap if i tap on this home i just want to go back to the current screen so all i'm going to do is just pop the drawer so we can say navigator.pop and this will just get rid of the drawer now for the settings tile i want to pop the drawer of course but then i also want to navigate to the settings page now this settings page we haven't created yet so let's just do that real quick There we go, you can see it works. We can go to our settings page. And lastly, the logout. So we had it in our app bar before, but let's get rid of this and get rid of the logout and let's put it in our drawer. Okay, so if I click on this logout tile, we just want to log out. So let's see if this works. And that's looking pretty good. So now that we've got the authentication done, it's time for the Firestore. So for kind of like our chatting functionality and the users and stuff like that. So if you go to the Firestore database, let's create database. 
You can select your region, but I'm just going to leave it at United States. And what we need to do here is in the rules, you can set up your custom rules, but just for us to be able to write information, I'm just going to change this to be true and just publish it. Cool. So if I come back to my code, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a new folder called services. And our auth service, we're going to put into this folder. And we're going to create another folder for chat services. So auth and chat, those are our two main services. Okay, so let's save and close all these files and just go to the chat service. And so in this class, what we're going to do is firstly, we need to import that package. So go to your terminal and type flutter pub add cloud firestore. And then once we got that, we are going to get a method to get the user stream to get all the users and display it on the screen. We need a method to send a message and also to get messages. So let's just start off with the getting an instance of the Firestore and let's start filling out the user stream. Now, if you look at this and it's kind of confusing, there's a lot of things going on. I can try to explain it nicely for you. So in this stream, you see inside here, the list that is a map that is a string dynamic. So what that means is firstly, a map, what that is, is it's kind of like a field like this and your Firebase console looks like a map. So it's got email, and what is the email for the user? It's test at gmail.com. And maybe they also have another property like an ID and it's some number. So this is an example of a map. It's kind of a way to represent like a user in this case. So we can have another map or another user, right? And so when you have a list of these, this is what this is talking about, a list of maps. Okay, and we're going to return the stream, stream meaning we're just going to listen to our Firestore. So we're going to return the Firestore collection. So it's in a collection called users. And let's go to the snapshots and we're going to map this. And I'll put the comments here just to try to make it as clear as possible. We're going to go through each individual user and just return that user. And at the end of all of these maps, we're going to return it to a list. Okay, so what did we just do? If you come to our home page, what we're going to try to do is try to display all the users. So firstly, I'm just going to get the chat and auth services. And for the body, I'm going to build the user list. So I'm going to separate this widget out just to keep our code clean. And we're going to return a stream builder. Now for the stream, we created this just then. So go to your chat service and we can say get users stream. And then for the builder, what we're going to do is firstly, just see if there's any errors. It might be loading. So if that's the case, just return loading. And then finally, when everything's done, let's return the list view. So for the children, we're going to look at the snapshot data and go through the map. And we're going to create each individual user list item. Okay, so even this, I'm going to just separate it out just to keep it nice and modular. So for building an individual user list item, I just need to know the user data, which is that map that we talked about.
and so let's put some comments here so display all users except current user okay and then we're going to return a user tile so a user tile is going to be another ui component so let's just create that real quick and what we need for this user tile is i just need to know the text and also the tab So let's create our gesture detector and just kind of like a container with some decoration. And the main element for this is a row of an icon and the username. Okay, so let's come back to our homepage. We're going to see the red squiggle because we need to fill out the text, right? So I'm just gonna display the user's email and then on tap, currently we are on the user page. Currently we're on the home page. So if we tap on a specific user, let's go to the chat page and chat with that user. Now this chat page we haven't created yet. So let's just create that very quickly here. and require the receiver's email just to know who we're chatting to. So let's come back to the home page, import the chat page we just created and just give it the user's email. Cool, everything's ready. So if I just come back to our red squiggle here, build user list item, we have to give it the two parameters which is the user data and just the current context. And I think that's all good. So currently, even though we have some users, it's not displaying the users, right? So what the issue is, is when we create a user, if you go to our sign up method, once we create the user, let's also save this user's information in a separate document. Okay, so let's get an instance of our fire store at the top. And go to that fire store's collection of users. And then we're going to go to the specific document for that user. And we're going to create a little map here. So let's save some information like the user ID and also their email. And it, sh it should be a good idea to put this in the sign in method as well, because sometimes we might make an account for a user in the back end and not through the app. So just to make sure we have all the users, just save the users if it doesn't already exist. And so let's create a user here, flutter at gmail.com. And if I register, you can see, yay, we have our first user in the app. Let's create Ronaldo. And there's Ronaldo. Cool, so we can now display all the users. Now, one thing you don't wanna display is you don't wanna display yourself. Like, if you see a page of users and you wanna to chat to them, we shouldn't be able to chat to ourselves. So we just wanna display everyone else. So let's just grab this and we're gonna put a quick if statement and just do a quick check. So is the email not equal to the current user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my auth service and let's just create a quick method here just to get the current user. And so we can just use that anywhere in our code just to get the current logged in user. So we're gonna compare that to the user's email and as long as it's not the same, we're gonna display it. And looks like it's still displaying myself. And whoops, that's because I got my current user, but I should get the email and compare the emails. I'm going to add some margin. 
and let's add some padding and I feel like we could add some space between the icon and the username and you can see if I click on any of these users I can go to a new chat page to talk to that user which is pretty cool Sweet, so now that we're on the chat page, we need to be able to finally send a message and also get the messages. So when we send a message, we just need to know the receiver and what the message is. The sender, we don't need to know because that's the current logged in user, which we can access anytime. So firstly, get the current user's info, and then we're gonna create a new message, and then we're gonna construct a chat room ID for these two users. And we, have to, and we have to make sure that this chat room ID is sorted to ensure uniqueness, which I'll explain a bit later on. And then we're going to add this message to the database. Cool. So let's come to the top and just also get the auth as well so that I can get the current user. So let's have the current user's ID and the current user's email. Now it's a good idea to save the timestamp, right? So we'll just say now, which is when the user sends a message. We're gonna collect that information. And we're going to create a new message. Now for this, I'm going to create a new folder called models. And let's have a message.dart file. And this is what an individual message should look like. We need to know the message's sender, right? So their ID and their email. We need to know who's gonna receive it, what the message is, and also the timestamp of this message. And with this information, let's have a quick method to convert it to a map. Sweet, so in our chat service, when we send a message, let's create a new message. So let's create a new message. So for the sender ID, the person who's sending it is just the current user. So let's just give it those details. Now we need to construct a chat room ID to store all of these messages. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a list of strings and we're just gonna have two strings in this IDs, which is the current user's ID and the receiver's ID. And then we're going to sort them. And what this does is it just makes sure that any two people have the same ID. Okay, then what we can do is just join the strings together. Let's join them with an underscore. And then finally, just add this to the collection in Firestore. And I'll show you what this looks like in the console in Firestore a bit later on. Now for getting the messages, it's quite similar as well. We're going to need the user ID and the other user ID, so just both people. And we're going to similarly construct a chat room ID for the two users. And then we're going to return the collection for the chat rooms and we're just going to go to that specific chat room. Cool, and that's pretty much it. Okay, sweet. So let's see if this works. Now, if I go to a chat room, the first thing I'll need is actually a input box so that the user can type a message in, right? So let's create a text controller. And let's get our chat and auth services. And let's just create a quick 
method here for sending a message, anything UI related. Now just to help the code out a bit, we're only going to send a message if there's something in there to send, right? Otherwise it's going to send blank messages. So as long as the message controller is not empty, then we can send the message. And actually, we also want to know the receiver's ID. So let's just require that at the top. Cool. And then the message, give it the message controller's text. Sweet. And then after we send it, we should clear the controller. Okay, sweet. Now let's start working on the UI. So in the body, we're going to have a big column and we're going to have two things. So the majority of the screen is going to be just displaying all the messages. And at the bottom, we want to display the user's input. So we're going to use an expanded widget for the message list to fill out most of the screen. And let's start by getting the sender's ID, which is just the current user's ID. And we're going to return a stream builder. Now, what stream are we going to listen to? Well, we already created that get messages stream and just give it the two different people. And we're going to build a list view. So let's just check for any errors and see if it's loading. And then finally, just return the list view. Let's build out a individual message item given a document. And we're just going to return the message. Sweet, everything's set up. So finally, let's just create our user input. So for this one, we, we're going to have a row. Now we already created our text field at the beginning of the video, right? So we're going to put that in an expanded widget because it should just take up most of the space. And then just next to it, we want to have a send button to send the message. And let's give that to our UI. Awesome. Now I'm just going to kill the app and just rebuild all this. And you can see there's our little user input at the bottom. So let's try this out. I'm going to say hello and hit the send button. And you can see that the messages are getting displayed. So if you come back to our Firebase console, you can see if you just refresh the page, you can see this is what it looks like. So we have a collection of users and we also have a collection for the chat rooms. And each chat room has its own ID, which is unique between two people. And so you can go to the messages and you can look at each individual message. Okay, awesome. Now one thing we have to fix is if I sign in under someone else, like Messi, and I type it, it's just all coming on the same side, right? So let's work with a bit of alignment to show the messages on the right, if it's for the current user, and then we want to have all the other person's messages on the left-hand side, right? So let's have a quick Boolean here just to check if this is the current user. 
So this right here will check if the user of this message is the current user that's signed in. And then using that, we can say, we can specify an, al an, an alignment. So is current user question mark? If it is, then align to the center right. If it isn't, align to the center left. Let's wrap this text in a container and give it the alignment. Mm, looks like it's still not working. Maybe we could give it into a column and then use the cross axis alignment. Oh, I know why, what happened. If I, if we come back to this new message, we mixed this up, the sender ID, we should give the current user ID and the email to the email. Well, that's why. Okay, let's save that. And now if I say this is messy, it comes to the right side. Okay, sweet. So let's just double check this. I'm gonna sign into Ronaldo. And let's talk to Flutter. And then the messages comes on the right hand side. And I'm just gonna log out. Let's sign in as Flutter and go to Ronaldo. And yep, it's on the correct side now. So the current user that types the message is always gonna be on the right hand side. Sweet, now the functionality is pretty much done. I just wanna finish off by decorating this up a little bit more. Like the user input at the bottom, it's too close. So let's put a padding. And the icon button, I'm just gonna make it kind of green on the outside, make it a circle. And the arrow can be white. And also let's create a chat bubble to make it look more like a chat application. So for any chat bubble, I just need to know the message and also if it's the current user. Right, so the color is just going to depend on if it's the current user or not. And let's try this out. So let's come back to our build message item and return a chat bubble. And you can see there it is, that's what it looks like. Let's make it look much better. So let's add some padding. Let's add some margin. And the text color can be white. And let's make the corners not sharp, more curved. And so you can just play around with this and adjust it to however you like, but that's looking pretty good so far. And also, you know these app bars, I like to just make them like in the home page. I like to just make it transparent and make the elevation zero and instead change the foreground color so that I can see that. I think that looks a little bit more cleaner and more minimal. So I'm going to do the same thing for the chat page. That looks better and also the settings page. Clean up the app bars and let's give it the background colors if you haven't. And just to finish off, the last thing I'm going to do is to implement dark mode into this application. So we've been doing everything in light mode. So I'm going to create another file here for the dark mode. And so again, you can choose your own colors, but I'm just going to use these colors and these shades of gray.
And for us to switch easily between the two themes, we need a theme provider. And so we're going to start off at, as light mode. And let's have a getter method to get what the current theme is. Let's also have a boolean to see if this is dark mode or not. So this is really helpful later on, which I'll show you. This little double double equal sign is just going to check if it's dark mode. And then we need to have a set theme data. And most importantly, we need a toggle theme. So if the theme is light mode, then change it to dark mode. and vice versa. Cool, so if I come back to my main.dart file, we need to give it the change notifier provider, which I actually didn't even import. So let's just import that real quick. Flutter pub add provider. And so you can say change notifier provider and give it the theme provider and then give it our app. And then if you come back to our material app at the bottom, you can see the theme currently, we just gave it light mode, but it could be light mode or dark mode, right? So we're just gonna use our provider to get the theme data. So this could switch between light mode and dark mode. Sweet, so now we actually need a switch, like a physical UI switch. So in the settings page, I'm gonna create a row and have a little toggle here. So I'm going to use a Cupertino switch, which is the Apple looking one, just because I think it looks better. And you can see for the value, if I say false, it's off. If I say true, it's on. And so let's just decorate this up real quick. Let's space between, give it a container with some decoration. That's looking pretty good. And so now for the value, it's gonna be a Boolean, like a true or false. So let's access our theme provider and just check if this is dark mode or not. And then on the changed, if the user taps on this switch, we want to go to that theme provider and then toggle the theme. Sweet, so let's save this and check this out. Yay, we can flick the switch and now we're in dark mode. Everything's in dark mode. And then if we need to make any specific changes to the colors, then you can go to this dark mode and then change it up. And what's even cool about this is you can actually click on this and then get the specific color that you want. So I feel like this secondary color could be a bit darker, like my tiles are looking pretty light. And so if I just save this, yeah, that's looking pretty good. And I think the chat bubbles could also use a bit of dark mode adjustment. So let's just see if we're in dark mode, right? Then let's adjust these colors. and also change the text colors appropriately to if it's dark mode or not. So just change this up to your appropriate style. 
And let me know if you have any questions about any of this, I can help you out in the comments below. Everything is working in terms of this chat app and it's looking pretty good. Sweet, now one last thing that we need to fix is if I go into a chat and I send a lot of messages, then it's gonna need to scroll down to the bottom, right? And especially when we toggle the software keyboard, it should automatically scroll to the bottom. So what we need to do is if I come to my chat page, I'm going to firstly convert this to a stateful widget. And then we need a focus node. So when I initialize the state, we're going to add a listener to this focus node. And so this is just helpful for the text field if we're in focus or not. So if we are in focus, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for the keyboard to show up and then that will allow us to calculate the remaining space on the screen. And then we're gonna scroll down. Okay, so we're not gonna scroll down immediately. We're going to just wait a little bit of time, 500 milliseconds, so that the keyboard shows up and then we'll scroll down. And we should also dispose of these focus nodes and controllers. And we need a scroll controller. So for the scroll down method, if we just get the scroll controller and we can animate to the very bottom. We can control this duration. I'm just gonna say, let's say one second and you can specify the type of curve, like the kind of animation. So I'm just gonna choose this fast out, slow in. And then if you scroll down, if you go to the list view, let's give the controller our scroll controller. And then also, if you go to the text field, we're going to give it our focus node. So let's go to our text field component and let's actually require this. So now in our text field, we can give it a focus node. And so what this is doing is if you go to one of the chats, if I click on the text field, it'll be in focus. And so the keyboard will show up, right? And then once the keyboard shows up, we're gonna scroll down, as you can see. Oh, now the other thing is when we go into the list, we should scroll down automatically, right? So let's also do that. If you go to the initial state, so when this page fires up, let's also do a similar thing. So it's gonna wait for the list view to be built and then let's scroll to the bottom. And I think the last case is when we send a message. So when I send a message, we also wanna just scroll down to the bottom so that we can see the latest message. Okay, let's test this out. Firstly, if I go in, it just scrolls automatically. I open the keyboard, it goes automatically. And if I type a new message, it scrolls down automatically as well. And that's it. That's how you create a minimal chat app using Flutter and Firebase. Just comment below if you have any problems or need help on anything. I'll try to come around and help you out. But I hope you learned something. You can download the code to this below if you're interested. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.